Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I kind of just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know what I've been doing in Black Desert Online since that first impressions video. So if any of you guys have been around since the Arc Age days or you are aware of the Arc Age days, uh, Black Desert has a great open world system. It's basically a theme box MMO and I'm currently out on the ocean sailing to my first world boss. Actually, it's a world boss on the ocean, which makes it even more cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first thing. I just wanted to show you guys the beautiful graphics. This actually is not even max. There is a ultra mode, but we're not really playing in ultra mode. And no, this is not my belt or my boat for people are gonna ask. This is uh, uh, my buddy Madoshi's boat. So anyway, let me go ahead and explain a few things about this game that I really like. Now. This video isn't really going to show combat, it's not going to be about that, it's just going to keep you guys up to date with what I've been doing and all of the cool stuff I found you can do with Black Desert. I'm also going to uh, go ahead and talk about a lot of, a lot of and or some of the negative aspects that many people bring up and I want to let you know how I'm avoiding those and or not letting them really bother me right now. So the first thing is I want to talk about life skilling because life skilling is one of the most fantastic things you can do in Black Desert Online. If anyone has ever played RuneScape before, right, ever, or I can't really speak about Ultima because I didn't play Ultima, but RuneScape specifically with the way your um, your professions work uh, or your skills as you level them up, Black Desert to me feels really, really similar. You've got basically all skills you can learn on one character, although it is more efficient to put certain skills on alternate characters. Simply put, the reason behind it is because if you are, you know, say for example, well, we're in the fucking ocean right now, but say you're in the desert and you're all the way down here doing whatever the fuck is down here, and then you realize you need to craft this thing for some random reason, instead of going from here, say, you know, random example, if your main town was all the way over here in Trent, this for a normal player would take you 30 to 40 minutes to get to if you've got a great mount maybe you can do it in 10 minutes maybe there's some better ways i don't really know but with an alt you could simply log off log on to your alt who's already in a location craft it and then with the beautiful way of how bdo works is you can just kind of send stuff around um since banks and stuff are not connected that really kind of puts a different take on how the game is played right so because if you're in if you're in velia and you're crafting in Velia, but your main town is Heidel, you'd have to send your resources from Velia and transport them over to Heidel, for example. So that's that's another really cool thing. So I've been getting into life skilling. Now, I just made an alt, and the purpose of the alt is gonna be for cooking, it's also gonna be for processing, and it's gonna be for alchemy. And I told myself that before I stop playing this game, which I'm not really sure when that's gonna happen, but just something I wanna commit to personally, I'm gonna make a pure fishing alt because I want to explore what is in the ocean and black desert because I'm gonna say it again, man I just really really love the ocean in black desert. You're saying I can fish right now I can just fish while we're swimming like I can just do this. I mean not swimming, but on a boat That's the thing. Is it actually working? I don't think that's working. It's okay, I don't really need to fish. It is working? Okay, we're just gonna leave it alone. So, one other thing that kind of goes hand in hand with the life skilling, and this, this also goes hand in hand if you don't life skill, you would still do this anyway, but this is basically the like worker system in this game. So if you guys have played things like uh, Neverwinter Nights, the MMO, or World of Warcraft, there's like a garrison system. Basically, you send out units, they go on a quest, they come back and they give you resources. Well, I feel Black Desert is kind of like one step ahead of that. Now, apologies, I've never really played much of WoW, so if it has a better system, I'm not trying to hate on it. But Black Desert has a really cool system where first you need to hire your workers, right? So you hire your worker and they go from like gray to green to blue to yellow to orange. That's their tier. They level up to 30 and then they all learn a bunch of skills. Now for min-maxing and stuff, I'm sure it's important, but just for the basics of new players, you know, you would just want to get like blue workers set up uh, and then understand the difference between them. Like goblins harvest faster and run faster, but they need to be fed more often. Giants are the complete opposite. You can take a look at like their food. Um, you know, it almost looked like the game just paused. <laughs> uh, and then humans are a little bit in between, but it's so cool because 
I'm trying to play this game the way I play RuneScape. Kind of like solo, like Iron Man self-found, but not really. I don't want to like ruin my experience by forcing myself to play like this. But I want to also understand it. I don't want to just take over, for example, uh, Logia Farm because it's the best way to make money. I want to take over certain things. Actually, I should be getting this potato. I don't know why I'm not. I want to take over certain things because I can be like, oh, potato is used for beer. Potato is a component that you use for it. I want potato to make that. Um, and that's really cool because it sets up the self-sufficient uh, kind of like gathering system so you can just do that, craft it, and go. And that is another thing I really like about MMOs. It's, it's really fun when um, instead of just going from point A to point B, you could go from point A to point B, but you'd be more efficient if you picked up this and you picked up this and you picked up this. So that's just kind of something really nice. And I just want to let you guys know what I've been up to. And you can probably expect some content maybe from this Mr. World Boss dude that will be see There's a fucking whirlpool there. Are we okay, dude? Is that... Is that... A, is that mad? It looks mad. Oh, I feel a bite. Fishing time. Let's do it. Uh, space bar. Okay. Don't judge me. I'm a really bad fisher. W-D-A-W-A. -A. Okay, we did it. Nice. That's a strong bite. So there are some some negative things about Black Desert, and I, I don't want to hide from them at all. So I do want to you know tell you up front. Personally, I really like the game right now, but some of the things that are a pain in the ass to deal with are one, the enchanting system in the game. Uh, really simply put, uh, I know a little bit about it, and I'm gonna explain it. So basically, your gear can all go to plus fifteen except accessories. After your gear gets to plus 15, it goes pry, duo, try, tet, pen, something like that, right? Doesn't matter that much, you know, as long as you can understand that. So the problem with the way the gear enhancing works is it's very complicated. I don't want to call it complex. I'd like to call it complicated. So basically, when you're trying to enchant your gear, um, you need to use something in the later game called fail stacking. What fail stacking means is when you go to enchant your gear and you fail, you get a stack. That stack basically helps assist you in your future plus, right? So the more, but it's not, it's not as simple as the more stacks you have, the more likely you are. It's like, say you have a, see how I have a, a tri generals belt here and a tri ultimate oros, but I have a duo Hercules gloves. So there would be a sweet spot from duo to try. So I don't know, let's just use an example. Let's say from duo to try, you want 25 stacks. So I would go and try, I'd have 25 fail stacks. I try to enchant duo to pry or whatever, duo to try, it fails, I'd go 27. I tried again, it fails, I'd go 29. I tried again, it fails, I go 31. So imagine now I'm in a new bracket for 31, which means I'm now going for try to tet. Does that like sort of make sense? So now, now I'm trying, now I'm switching gears that I'm enhancing because my fail stack value is higher. So I would switch to this and then boom, right? So the other thing that's complicated is now this succeeded, right? So this goes from try to tet and bam, you know, we get it. Just tell me which channel you want to swap, swap, uh, swap to, man. Um, so now because you're at zero fail stacks, you need to find another piece of gear People use things like Reblath Plate. You don't need to know what this is. You would have to intentionally fail to get your fail stacks higher before you attempt enhancing your gear. So it's like a very convoluted process. We're not even gonna talk about accessories because accessories literally blow up if you fail them automatically. And we're not gonna talk about that other stuff. But simply put, the enchanting system is a real pain in the ass at times. So it really sucks for people trying to learn it. Some people like it. I can't really understand why. I mean, it definitely feels really good when everything goes your way, but it feels really bad when things don't go your way at all. Okay, I'm switching channels right now, man. So one of the other things, uh, and th this one is a more personal one, because I'll be real. The thing with the enchanting system is that you can buy most of your gear from the auction house. You may not be able to buy the best in slot things, for the sole reason that you can set a pre-order on the auction house. And if you if you pre-order on the auction house, you can set an extremely high pre-order. 
So if you sat in extremely high pre-order because you're rich, no one's really going to be able to contest you and you're always going to get it if that's what you're trying to do. And the reason why that kind of sucks is because a lot of the time gear is going to require um, the same exact gear to get durability. So you like fuse it together or you use something else. But anyway, that's whatever. So the next thing I want to talk about that is kind of shitty, uh, and this one directly affects me and it, I really don't like the way the system is for this a lot more than the enchanting. There are these things called loot pets. I'm sure you guys are already aware of this. Loot pets in this game can only be acquired in three ways. So first off, you can have a total of five loot pets and your loot pets can have different tiers and you have to spend a shit ton of stuff to get them up tiers. But let's just start with the basics because not everybody needs that shit. So your goal would be to get five loot pets. The problem is, is loot pets cost $10 per. Now, if you were to put in money into BDO as like an investment, like if you put in $100 into BDO the first day you play and you don't put any money in for a month, or sorry, not a month, <laughs> a year, you're spending less than $10 a week and it's a great investment. The problem is people don't wanna put a hundred dollar investment into the game to just try the game out but you're gonna feel like you're always further behind everyone else like everyone else if you can't loot fast enough right because when you're going from pack to pack to pack grinding you have to stop pick up your loot pick up your loot again go to the pack kill pick up your loot whereas another player for example not even better gear just loot pets could pop a pack move to the next pack pop a pack move to the next pack right so the way to get loot pets is A, you can spend $10 per loot pet, B, you can wait about six months or so and they do events where they, I, I will be real on this, BDO or uh, Parlabis or Cacao Games, I'm not sure, I guess Cacao Games, is extremely generous with their login rewards and their event rewards, meaning you will be uh, gaining a lot of cash shop items through that stuff, but this goes back to what I was saying before. It goes back to the nobody wants to spend a hundred dollars at the beginning but at the same time nobody wants to wait six months to feel you know like the person next to them who put in money overall it is it is like a pretty decent system but they're definitely on the scummy side of how much they can take from you but like i said not everybody's goal is to be super efficient and you have to remember that there are so many good aspects of the game so we don't always have to focus on those bad aspects um, and then the last way I, I didn't bring up is basically the auction house. People can sell pets on the auction house. But again, all the experienced players, you know, are just going to, everyone pretty much when, when a pet goes listed, is just going to be like, oh my God, Zerg the auction house. Everyone's going to try to get it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. I just wanted to give you the real one because, you know, I gave you guys the first impressions before and a lot of you guys were basically telling me like, oh, well, you know, when you get to this, you're not really going to like it, blah, 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 blah. But I think honestly the game is really solid you just have to you just have to go in with the right mindset you know like what is it that you want to do if your goal is to be number one in the game but you haven't played for two years and there's people who have been grinding for two years you're not going to be number one this is not it's not the game for you right but if you just want to go in at your own pace and learn the game you could very well soak three months into the game before you get to a part where you're like well fuck i don't really like this that much the thing is though as well is Cacao Games is aware of this and or uh, Pearl Abyss is aware of this and from what I've been told Enchanting and stuff is going to be getting a bit better in the future So if you just take the game slow, you, you never really know who knows. Maybe you're coming in at a great time um, Anyway, though, like I said, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves um, I'm gonna continue to release some content on Black Desert online uh, I will also start releasing content on Path of Exile once we go back and play it during the leagues. Really excited about the uh, private leagues. We're going to be doing some fun stuff on stream. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.